In the opening scene, Eric and Talia are seen having sex. After they finish, Eric gets up to take a shower while Talia heads downstairs to make herself a drink. She notices that the sliding glass doors in the living room are open. She closes the doors, then puts on a CD. Eric finishes with his shower and steps out into the bedroom where he sees something written on the mirror. As he steps closer, he realizes the message is written in blood and reads, You're next. When he looks down, he finds Talia lying in a pool of blood, stabbed to death. As Adam turns around, he is accosted by a masked man who kills him with a machete to the head. In the next scene, Paul and Aubrey, a middle-aged couple, are driving to their country home. As they pass by their neighbor's house, Paul mentions that the neighbor recently left his wife for a co-ed. They enter their country home, a stately mansion, heavily secluded deep in the woods. As they are unpacking, Audrey hears a noise come from upstairs. She is then startled by Paul, who enters the dining room where she was setting up. She asks if he was upstairs just then, he says no. She thinks someone is upstairs, but he just brushes it off, saying it's a creaky old house. Just then, they hear another sound. Paul sends Aubrey outside while he goes up to investigate. He enters the upstairs bedroom and is about to open a dark closet door when he is startled by Crispian, his son. Crispian asks why his mother is outside, crying. Paul and Crispian head downstairs. Once they leave the room, the closet door creaks open, revealing that someone was, in fact, hiding inside. Paul and Crispian meet Aubrey outside, where she is comforted by Aaron, Crispian's Australian girlfriend. It is later revealed that the entire weekend is a family reunion of sorts, which includes Crispian's two brothers and his sister. Aaron and Crispian are the first to arrive, with the rest set to arrive the next day. That night, while in bed, Crispian reveals to Aaron that his father was in the marketing department for a huge defense contract company, and the family is loaded. The next morning, Crispian awakens and heads downstairs, where he finds Aaron sitting with Drake, Crispian's brother, and Kelly, Drake's wife. Drake is somewhat arrogant and condescending, and mocks Crispian for being fat as a child. Aaron goes into the kitchen where Aubrey is preparing dinner and asks if she needs help. Aubrey asks if Aaron can go to the neighbor's house and borrow some milk. Aaron heads over to the house, where she hears the Dwight Twilly song blaring. As she knocks on the door, the song ends and starts right up again. From inside the house, we see Eric's dead body propped up on the sofa, so it appears he is just sitting, as we hear Aaron knock on the door. When she receives no reply, she heads back to the house. Later that night, the rest of the family arrive, Felix, Crispian and Drake's other brother, and his girlfriend, Z, a moody goth chick, and Amy, the little sister, and her boyfriend, Tarek, a documentary filmmaker. As the family sits down to dinner, Paul toasts the reunion of the family, and everyone seems to be enjoying themselves. However, the mood is suddenly broken when Drake starts mocking Tarek's films, claiming that he enjoys commercials more than actual filmmaking, then asks Crispian how he and Aaron met. Crispian, who is a teacher-slash-professor, reveals that Aaron was originally his TA, but stopped when they begin dating. Drake mutters that it was unprofessional under his breath, which Crispian hears, and an argument ensues. Soon, the rest of the family joins in, and everyone starts arguing. In the middle of all of this, Tarek looks out the window and sees something. He gets up from the table and approaches the window. Suddenly, an arrow bursts through the glass, striking Tarek square in the forehead. No one notices at first, until they see Tarek stumble around, then drop dead to the floor with the arrow sticking out of his head. More arrows burst through the window panes, causing everyone to fall to the ground and seek cover. In the middle of the panic, Aubrey stands up, and Drake moves to push her out of the way, just as another arrow breaks through the glass, hitting Drake in the shoulder. The family makes it out of the dining room while they tend to Drake's wound. Everyone checks their phones to call 911, but none of the phones are working. 
Felix mentions that whoever it is might be jamming the signals. Erin grabs her phone and sends a text message to 911, revealing that she knows that they have to respond to that, but is unsure if they will get a decent signal. They decide that one of them should run outside and try to get to one of the cars. Amy volunteers. Crispian suggests that Amy get a running start and that he and Paul will open the doors at the last second to catch the killers by surprise. Amy makes a break for the door. They open the doors, and she makes it outside, but is immediately cut down by a length of piano wire stretched horizontally in front of the door. The wire slices Amy's jugular, and, after they pull her back inside to safety, the family watches helplessly as she bleeds to death. Aubrey breaks down after watching her daughter die. Aaron runs upstairs and checks around, finding no one, and suggests they put Aubrey to bed. Paul comforts Aubrey as he puts her to bed and leaves her in the room, locking the door behind him. Aubrey is inconsolable and continues to cry in bed, just as a man dressed in black clothes and wearing a fox mask crawls out from under the bed. As Aubrey continues to wail, Fox Mask pulls out a machete and kills Aubrey with a blow to the head. The rest of the family hears Aubrey scream and rush upstairs, where they find Aubrey's corpse and the words you're next scrawled on the wall in her blood. Paul breaks down and is helped back downstairs by his sons. Kelly goes up into the bedroom to see Aubrey's corpse and notices the window is open. She moves to close the window, then hears something in the room. She peeks down under the bed and sees Fox Mask. Frightened, Kelly runs from the room, screaming, and runs outside. Drake goes after her, but knocks the back of the arrow sticking out of his shoulder against the piano wire, causing him extreme pain. He grabs the end of the arrow and yanks it from his shoulder, causing him to pass out. Crispian and Aaron pull Drake back inside the house. Crispian then tells Aaron that he's going to go look for help and promises that he will return. Kelly rushes through the woods and comes upon Eric's house. She sees Eric sitting on his couch, and she screams to be let inside, slamming her hands against the back windows. Eric, however, doesn't respond because he is dead. As Kelly continues to pound on the glass, the reflection of a man wearing a tiger mask materializes behind her. She turns around just as a person with a tiger mask throws her through the glass. Kelly, injured and bleeding, begins crawling on the floor as Tiger Mask pulls out a maul, puts his foot on Kelly's neck, and slams the maul into Kelly's head.
that signal came back, it, his... <laughs> By the way, if you found this content valuable and would like to stay updated with our future releases, we invite you to subscribe to our channel.